All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our special marketing edition of the Monthly Denim Social Lunch and Learn. I'm so glad that we get to have a little marketing takeover today. We're going to definitely miss Taylor, our usual hostess, um, but we're really excited to share all about these 2023 social media trends for financial institutions with you all. And today we're going to be covering what financial marketers and social sellers need to be in the know about as we go into the next year. Um, and as always, you're welcome to drop any questions you might have in the chat box as we go throughout the presentation, and we will address those at the end. And then later today, we'll send out follow-ups with the resources and materials that we cover today that you can share with your team and then reference for future use. And just a quick note that all of these trends can be applied at the brand level and the user level as you're building out your social selling programs. So without further ado, let's get into it. I am Connor Phillips. I'm the marketing manager here at Denim Social. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Blair, VP of marketing at Denim Social. Um, I head up marketing strategy here and work with Connor and the rest of the marketing team to develop great content and many other things that we bring to our customers and influencers, too. We're excited to be here today to talk to you about 2023 social media trends. And if you're like us here at our marketing department, you're busy planning for 2023 and are trying to figure out the best ways to prepare for the new year. But if we know anything, we know that constant is the only change, right? So audiences and trends change and Connor is going to lead us through um, some polls right now and show us some stats just to kind of show us what we're up against. So Connor, you want me to launch the first poll here? Sure. And we're just doing this as a little background check into what's driving some of these trends. And so, yeah, with that, let's test some knowledge. So as of 2022, how much time does the average American spend on social media each day? So I'll give everybody a little bit here to answer. Yeah, we see the results coming in. Maybe think about how much you spend on social media each day. Be honest with yourself. All right. I think, oh, I see a few more. All right. We're going to stop it. Okay. All right. If you said two hours and three minutes a day, you are correct. So that means that... Young people are using the internet almost constantly, and social media makes up a really big part of that. Mm -hmm. um, you have to kind of think about all the filler time you spend just browsing, scrolling, if you're in line, um, and all of that adds up to a pretty good chunk of your waking hours. Like Almost like 15%, probably, of, of time spent awake. And our audience did a great job and knew the answer to that. 61% of everyone got it, so well done. Okay, let's go into the next question. Give me just one moment. All right, here we go. Okay, maybe if you're a mortgage loan officer, you might know this one, but which generation is the largest group of home buyers currently? Give everybody a little more time. All right, I think I've seen everyone stop. So let me share the results. Okay, you guys are good. Yeah. Millennials currently make up 43% of all home buyers. I still feel like it, there's some kind of like misconception that it's not though, that um, that millennials are younger when in fact, like if you're like me, one of the elder millennials, you're kind of pushing 40 maybe, and you might actually even be on your second or your third home. Gen Z is actually in their mid to, well, early to mid twenties and are coming up into home buying age as well. So for millennials who have grown up with the internet and watched social media come into existence, they're the buyers of today. 
but Gen Z is, is coming down the pike and they're the customers of tomorrow. So it's important to be meeting them both generations where they are and that's on social media. Okay, let's go to poll number three. All right, let me get it launched. Here we go. Okay, so a massive generational wealth transfer is underway as the baby boomers age. How much money is going into the pockets of Gen Z and millennials as a result of this? So there's going to be a lot of new money for financial professionals to handle for these young folks. Results are still coming in. I got this one wrong before I saw it. So yeah, I think I did too. All right. I think. I think we've got everyone. Okay. So I'm going to end. See what everybody said. Ooh, you guys were a little off with this one. $84 trillion is about to get passed down to a new generation. Um, so good job. We got them mainly right. And maybe some of this was a surprise. Maybe some of it wasn't. But I think what's really clear is that times are changing and these younger people, younger generations are really quickly becoming the primary group of financial services customers. All right, so here is a little preview of what our Denim Social social media crystal ball says. And before we jump into these, we just want everybody to keep in mind that you don't have to do all of this or feel like you have to like immediately jump into action. And don't be worried if you aren't here quite yet with any of these trends. Um, what we want to communicate is that it's just important to be aware of them, to know what's going on in the industries so that you as a marketer or as a social seller or a financial professional can best meet your customers where they are. And especially as the world of technology continues to evolve and these new generations come of age. So here are the trends that we can expect to see in the next year. We're gonna talk about the growth of short form video content, the rise of financial advice influencers, more personal and authentic content, enhanced marketing automation, and social media as a search engine. Mm -hmm. We're excited to dig into these, each of these in more depth. This webinar is actually an extension of a guidebook that we released recently, and we're going to be sending out as a follow-up after our webinar today. Um, and as we went and put these trends together, we actually used a variety of resources to get our information. Um, just keeping up with our own strategy here at Denim Social Marketing Lands, um, we're constantly reading research to understand the different shifts and trends. We also listen to our customers, I think many of whom are probably on this webinar today. And customers provide such great feedback and insight, so thank you for that continuing feedback loop, customers. Um, we also get a lot of really great intel just because like you were on the front lines of publishing our own content and running our own social selling strategies and programs. So I think just sit back and relax as we dig in and Connor's going to get us started on our first trend. All right. So our first trend is the growth of short form video content. So um, Connor, I'll go through and, and read the stats. 89% um, of TikTok users believe finance is an important topic and are actively trying to educate themselves according to TikTok. And short form videos were just 21% of YouTube views in um, 2021, but more than doubled um, in 2022. So, and I think these stats are telling, like if we go back to what we know about home buyers today, millennials and G Gen Z coming up, um, they're the people who are gonna be watching these short form videos, right? Um, this short form video movement, it's called TikTokification. Um, it's how videos of how people wanna get information, how they receive information from social media today. 
Yeah. And video is like easy these days too. All of the apps like TikTok and Instagram have these like built-in editing capabilities. And a lot of the people that you see on social media are just shooting very casual videos with their iPhones. And it's become clearly the primary way that people are consuming content. And it's not all just like cat videos and dances, like people are really looking to these networks to learn and educate themselves. Um, and I would just take like this quick example I have up on the slides. Um, this is someone on YouTube who is explaining how to make budgets in Excel. Um, so super simple, uh, definitely the exact type of content that people are looking up, just providing value, insight, helpful hints um, with what they're creating. So that's really key. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, you know, thinking about this, Megan, I know a lot of people probably feel really overwhelmed. Like I know sometimes I do. Video can be hard. Um, but what advice would you give to people when they are just feeling like it's a lot to tackle? Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, people get overwhelmed with it because it seems like such a, a big thing, but I, it doesn't have to be. It can be really simple. You don't have to learn a TikTok dance. Uh, you don't have to try to get your cat to do something creative. That's going to be a cool cat video. Um, and I don't even think you have to be totally camera ready, right? I think that authenticity, which we're going to get to here in a little bit, it steals the show every time. You don't have to have this gorgeous background, hair and makeup. Being real in the moment is what's going to get the best engagement. And really, I think a big part of why people feel overwhelmed is that they feel like they have to have a big script or um, just something really rehearsed. And I don't think that's the case. Actually, as we know, short form video does, does the best. So those little bite-sized nuggets of information, I'd say 30 seconds or less, it takes some of the pressure off. You don't have to prepare that much. Um, and lastly, just as always be upbeat, positive, energetic, but be informative. Um, there's a word going around that's kind of a combination of education and entertaining, edutainment. Um, so just always keep that edutaining in mind and being um, educational, informative, and uh, also have a little fun with it. So Connor, in talking about that, what are some of the different kinds of content that people can be posting or that people um, on the webinar should be encouraging their social sellers to post? Yeah. And I mean, again, you know, you're not trying to win an Oscar here. You're just trying to like get a message out really effectively. So I would start with thinking about questions you get asked a lot or pain points that people have, things you're always trying to drive home with your customers, and then also looking at the content you like to consume that you enjoy looking at. Um, I think those are probably good places to start when you don't really know what kind of content to make. Great. All right, so let's move on to our next trend. Okay, so the rise of financial advice influencers. Um, everybody can have a social media presence these days. And I think that's a really unique and exciting time to be alive that we can do this. But it unfortunately means that there's a lot of disinformation being spread by people who have like no credibility, no certifications, no legitimacy at all about what they're saying. Um, I found a really cool YouTube video, or it's a channel here, um, and these are two financial advisors that review bad advice they see on TikTok about different financial topics, and it's really fascinating. They break down why what people are saying is wrong, like what the issues are, and what to do instead. So this is a really great, uh, you know, financial advice influencer example. Mm -hmm. And to hit some of the stats that are on the slide here, Gen Z is almost five times more likely to get financial advice from social media platforms than some of the other generations. And one third of Americans trust social media to help them make financial decisions. And 32% trust social me media influencers and celebrities financial advice. So um, Connor, kind of going back to what you were saying, I think that there's so much misinformation around um, financial education out there. But the good news is 
is that it's created a huge opportunity for bankers and loan officers, advisors and insurance agents, many of you on this webinar today to say, hey, we are the actual financial professionals and you need to make sure that you're getting sound advice. This doesn't mean that you have to provide weekly lessons or take a ton of time, but I think it's just a great way to think about creating engaging content that people are actually going to be searching for online in that short form video format that we talked about before as an example. Um, so um, yeah, I think that that's kind of um, the, the real opportunity that financial um, professionals have going for them right now. Yeah. And since anybody can kind of be anything or say they know anything online, how would you communicate to audiences that, you know, as a professional, you're the real source of truth? What would you say, Megan? Yeah, I, I think that it's just as simple as making sure that your, your social media profiles and pages are up to date because you have the skills and the experience and your social sellers have the skills and experience to back up what you're saying. So um, being a member of a verified institution, actually having those professional credentials, make sure that that all is lives on your social media so that when people go there, they can see that you are the professional and you know what you're talking about. Um, so Connor, I have a question back for you now, um, as we were talking about putting all this great information and advice out into the world, I'm kind of wondering about compliance and feel like compliance might come into play here too. And you know, us at Denim Social, we're all about compliance. So tell us, um, how, how our, our customers or our people on this webinar should be thinking about that. Yeah, if you work in a regulated industry, you know, compliance is always a factor when it comes to social media and creating like your own personal content. So platforms like ours at Denim Social, we do have a compliance feature built in, but maybe if you're on TikTok or you're creating videos, um, there's not really uh, an established system for it if you're new to it. So I think running it by your compliance team, uh, getting other people in the marketing department to check on it, I would always say it's better to be safe than sorry and make sure what you're saying online is representative of your company and yeah, that it's got the, the seal of approval in there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. So we'll move on. This is maybe our favorite, I dare say, uh, trend here at Denim Social. So the increase in personal content and authenticity. So this is something we constantly try to drive home at Denim Social with our own team, our own social sellers, our customers, because we always say that people buy from people and not from brands. So there's really got to be a human element woven into any content you create. And especially when you're posting at the user level, if you're a social seller, because in a world where there's so many options and different people to choose from when it comes to services and products. This is how you stand out from the crowd and, and make a name for yourself. Yep. And we have a couple of familiar faces on this screen. First of all, to point out, Kelly Illum is one of our uh, customer success managers here at Denim Social and also Nola Morris, our VP of strategy. So I love that we get to use them um, as our example here because Connor, like you said, that this is one of Denim Social's favorite trends. So Nola posted this on LinkedIn after attending a conference earlier this year. And there's just so many things I love about this post and I wanna point out some of them. So you guys can be thinking about how you engage and just make things more authentic. First and foremost, she tagged Kelly in it, which is important always tag people um, to get that engagement and connection, um, shout them out and post as much as you can. She personalized it to talk about Mother's Day and then talked about how it's work-related, flying home from a conference from Social Media Week that she attended. They're at the airport. They look fantastic, but still at the airport. So it goes back to like, you don't have to be like, have this beautiful background and totally camera ready. Um, it's bringing that authenticity through. Um, so um, I, I just, I love this post so much. I think it has really great elements of, of being authentic. Connor, any other thoughts or feedback on, on this post that we have here? No, I love this. Um, and it really shows their personality 
and uh, is very personal, but also still professional at the same time. So I love this one. Okay. I found this on the web for is there a person? Sorry, guys. <laughs> just a little tent glitch. It's fine. Yuri just wanted to talk. I don't know what happened. Sorry, I cut you off, Connor. Oh, good. So like I said, love this one. And I think when we look at why social selling is important when it comes to financial institutions staying authentic, um, it kind of goes back to the edutainment stuff you were talking about, Megan. And yeah. Consumer expectations are changing. So they're expecting to see posts like this one with Kelly and Nola. Um, that's how you catch attention because they're looking for that little way to connect with someone and um, have that personal relatability note. Yeah, um, and like I said, it's professional, but it's fun. So in your opinion and your experience, Megan, how do you tow that line? Yeah. That, that can be a tricky one. I think that you have to think about the platform that you're on and kind of the goal of post. There might be circumstances to get more personal, um, but if you're on LinkedIn, it might make sense to lean more professional. So again, I think you just have to think about um, what you want to get out of it or what you're trying to really communicate. Um, but at the end of the day, if you've crafted really great connections and if your social sellers have crafted those really great connections, then these people you already have relationships with and getting a little more personal and adding that personal touch isn't ever a bad thing. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that at the end of the day with social media, you're talking to people, you're not like putting on a show or, you know, creating an act, like you're just communicating with your customers and with your colleagues and other industry thought leaders um, in a normal way. So just keep it pretty normal. All right, so we'll move on to our next trend, which is enhanced marketing automation connections. So Megan, I know at Denim Social, we work with several partners in our industry mm -hmm. that make our social media management platform more valuable for our customers, for financial marketers. So can we just elaborate on what that means and why it's important? Yeah, I, I think this is so important. Finding technology that can speak to each other is huge. Um, curating a tech stack that can work with you and for you, um, not having tech that makes you have to do a lot of manual labor to kind of bridge the gap. It it's it's a game changer, really. So, and and I can speak to this because at Denim Social, um, we've been working really hard on several integrations this past year, and we have uh, several more on the roadmap for for 2023 that we'll be excited to to share with you all soon. Um, on this slide in particular, we're highlighting our CRM integrations. Um, so, Surefire, Ancillary, Total Expert. Um, and how this particular, these particular integrations work is using social media to get leads at the top of the funnel. So using all the great ways that we just discussed to, to post and drive engagement and ultimately get leads through our paid ads pl uh, platform and through our landing pages. And then using the integration between those platforms to get leads into your CRM systems routed and automated so that you can create those new business opportunities with less hassle. Um, and if we have customers on the call today that um, have these CRMs, but don't have these integrations set up, feel free to reach out to your CSMs after the call today um, for more information. But yeah, I think that these, these integrations are, are just integral to, um, to your business, really. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the stats on the slide, you can tell this is at the top of a lot of marketers minds mm -hmm. because it drives productivity when you have these automations set up and people are incorporating it into their budgets because they know how valuable it is. Um, but I think if you're starting out, it, it's a little tricky to understand how it works and what's available. So if I was a marketer looking to be more productive and increase my effectiveness, where would I start even looking for these tech solutions? Yeah, it can be tricky, Connor, because I think sometimes you come into an organization 
And some of that tech is inherited, right? It's like what you have to work with, which is fine. And, and you can work with those different partners to figure out how things then do integrate with each other. So lean on your partners for that understanding. And then I think that um, there's so much power in our own personal networks. There's other people um, from financial services organizations that have gone before you and built a carefully curated tech stack that have great intel into about what works and what might not work in certain circumstances. Um, so I think lean on other professionals in your industry to get that insight and information as well. But I know at Denim Social, um, as a partner that, that enables these integrations, we're always happy to help um, provide any information. So I know that you can lean on your partners um, of these different texts as well. Yeah, use the buddy system. Don't go it alone. 100%. All right. So this is our last trend, social so media as a search engine. I am so excited to talk about this one because Connor, we've talked about this internally as a marketing department, as we've gone through and we've researched and determined this as a trend. This is the elder millennial in me coming out here. I have a hard time with this one. Social media is a search engine. I'm old school. I still Google stuff. How does this even work? It's okay. Google is not going anywhere just yet. And I will admit I have one foot in the Gen Z generation and one foot in the millennial generation. So I kind of gravitate towards social media when I want to look something up. And I really didn't even realize I was doing it. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you do it without realizing it, but I was recently planning a trip and I wanted to find like restaurants to go to, places to visit. And I found myself looking at TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, because I knew there were a lot of really cool travel bloggers and um, accounts dedicated to the different places I was going to be going. And I knew it would be really curated in a way that was exactly what I was looking for without having to sift through a billion Google search results. I got exactly what I needed. That makes sense. I guess I can get on board with that. Um, so I'm going to hit the stats here on the slide. Nearly 40% of Gen Z prefers to use TikTok and Instagram for search over Google. Um, and for young people, there's a sense that real people on social media are synthesizing and delivering information rather than faceless websites. So backing up exactly what you just said. Yeah. And I think it's kind of telling that Google is seeing TikTok and Instagram as direct competitors these days. Yeah. And I think part of the draw is how highly visual social media networks are. It's actually enjoyable to browse because you're either going to find what you're looking for or a lot of times maybe you get sidetracked with something else, but it's still what you're interested in. Um, so I think for financial services professionals, having a presence there with accurate information is necessary because that's how people might find you. So a question about that then, what steps can financial institutions take to meet people on social media or to be there when they're, they're, they're searching? I mean, the first step is being there. So even if you're like, well, I'm not really ready for TikTok yet, like you still need to have a profile so that when you do get there, you don't have to worry about your handle not being there or, you know, creating the account from scratch. So having all that, having your contact information, your business hours, things like that, so that people can actually get in touch with you. I would start engaging with your customers. So who do you talk to a lot that you can add and engage with? Um, work on your content strategy. So like I said, we've got a lot of cool denim social resources when you're launching social selling programs, keeping your authenticity woven throughout all your content, and then adopting, like we said before, some of those social media best practices. Um, and then maybe if you're already on these platforms or networks, maybe it's getting your team really activated and getting your social sellers supported so they can do these things too. Yep. Um, and speaking of social sellers, Megan, what would you tell marketers to do to support their own social sellers? They're boosting their presence on the networks. Yeah, I don't think it has to be anything that's too tricky. 
Um, hashtags are a great way, first of all, to um, make sure that you're contributing to the conversations or being found in the conversations that you're contributing to. So doing some um, research around that, what's trending or what's popular, so you'll be able to show up in those conversations is crucial. Um, a really easy one is just connecting with people or following people because it's likely that they'll follow or connect with you back. So it's a great way to expand your audience and, and just be found when you're um, putting out more information, right? Um, paid ads is a great one to get in front of the people that maybe you're not connected to to expand that reach. Um, so I think paid ads is, is a great way to, to be found in search as well. Um, and then I think it's important to think beyond the search. Once someone actually finds you, making sure kind of going back to that social 101, do you have a profile picture? Do you have your contact information so that they found you, that they can reach out to you? Um, I think that just making sure that you have that call to action and having a way for people to connect with you once they do find you is uh, kind of the last thing to check off there. Yeah, all really great advice. Awesome. Um, so. so yeah, I, I'll go to start it here on this kind of that we're, we're summing it all up here now. Um, so I think that even if you're not ready to, to adopt something new and some of the things that we've talked about today, there's still takeaways and trends for you to be aware of, and you don't have to do it all at once. Um, you can modify, modify as you need to, and encourage your team of social sellers to do it too. Take some of these suggestions maybe and do a quick video or training. I always love to gamify things, see who can do the best short form video or who can give the best piece of edutainment advice. Um, I think that there's always ways for you and your team to be ready for some of these new trends and go and incorporate them into your strategy going forward. So Connor, why don't you uh, sum it up for us here? Yeah, so just kind of what we want everyone to take away from these trends on how you can incorporate it into your own practices. So social selling is key for staying engaged and relevant with your audiences. Bring human elements into all of your content. Use expertise to educate and connect with people. Don't be afraid to try new ways of doing things. Don't be afraid to try these trends. Um, think of ways you can incorporate it into your own team strategy. And then just remember, you can't do it all by yourself. It, it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to have the right tools and resources. And it's really just uh, doing it little by little. And, you know, don't feel overwhelmed. Just be aware that all these trends are happening and think of ways that you can incorporate them. So that's the advice we would give everybody. Awesome, perfect. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free, feel free to throw them in the chat right now. We've got it up and, and are looking at it. Um, so I'm gonna go through some of them, Connor. Um, the first one asked where our stats were from. I think that was in reference to the first slide. And I think we have them in our, um, our trends guidebook that we're going to be sending out and they're referenced in there. So you can look for them there, um, but we'll make sure that you have those sources um, when we follow up with you today. Um, next question is, what would you tell an organization that is afraid of being less formal? And I think that's such a great question. I mean, I think it, it's, you know, we talked about towing the line a little bit, right? It's, um, you have to go in with what your organization feels comfortable with. But I think if there's ways to like small, like a little bit test and just put something out there and see if that in, ignites more engagement, um, then you've got proof, right? You can go and be like, okay, well, being, having that more authentic or um, less formal self might um, bring forth some more engagement or more likes or connections. Um, Connor, do you have any other thoughts or feedback on this question? Yeah, I think a good way to break the ice into some more personal content is maybe do like a meet the team series. Mm -hmm. So put someone's picture or a video with them and add a little bio, what they do, like what their favorite things are. Um, and this is just a small way where you have a way that audiences can learn like who's behind the brand without it being like too, I guess, like 
fun or too personal. You're just kind of starting to get to know them a little better. So I think that's kind of a good launching pad for more personal content. Um, I agree. I love that. Um, we had a question from a customer about the total experts integration. So I see you and I will get you in touch with your customer success manager and let them know that you reached out. Um, here's a really good question. A lot of what was talked about was based on Gen Z heavy trends, but millennials are the ones buying a house right now. So do these trends speak to millennials too? I absolutely think that they do. Millennials, I think, again, they grew up with they grew up with and without the internet, which is kind of a cool paradox. But I mean, at the height of when social media was being created, were in college or in high school and kind of grew along with social media. So I think that we, uh, we as a millennial, I think millennials totally fall into all the trends that we talked about today. Gen Z might be a little bit ahead of the curve with it, but I think that it definitely applies to millennials too. Connor, what do you think? Yeah, and I think that's why it's important to get started now, mm -hmm. and that way you'll be prepared when Gen Z, they are buying houses, they're the primary home buyers. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and millennials speak tech, just like um, younger generations, so that's why it's important to kind of start now so you don't fall behind in the future. I'm going to start using TikTok as a search engine. Got to do more. it. <laughs> Awesome. Um, let me see if we have any other questions. Um, I think we're all good. Oh, oh I had one. Okay. Yeah, go for it. So someone asked where good content comes from. Mm. Do you want to take that one or you want me to take that one? I'll start it off a little bit. I mean, I think part of it is trusted sources. So with our denim social content libraries, we have um, publications that we approve of that we know we can um, rely on to be shareable for our team. I think your own company's blog or website, if you have any thought leadership that comes out of there. Um, industry knowledge, so keeping your audiences up to speed on what's happening with the economy. Um, obviously, the housing market's been a hot topic in the past couple years. Um, so just being a source of education. Another really good idea is to plug into your local community. Um, other small businesses that you love, um, just ways that bring people together and also show um, the more personal side of you in a charitable way um, that you are someone that cares about these things and uh, really loves the, the place you live. And then I think I said this before, but also just pay attention to what content you consume. I think a lot can be found by some inner reflection and uh, you'll get some good ideas that way. Yeah. So we have another really good question that came through. Um, creating short form video for an organization that has multiple locations across several states is hard. If I'm responsible for creating short form for a whole banking organization, where do I start? Especially working remote, it seems so daunting. So I have thoughts on this. Connor, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? My initial thought is that the good thing about video is it can be done anywhere. Um, you don't necessarily have to be there to shoot it because anyone that has a phone with a camera can make their own content. But I think the first thing you have to do is offer resources and guidance for the people that you want to create content. So maybe um, sending them a framework, sending them like exactly what you want maybe adding an example. Uh, so instead of just asking someone to give you content, really give them like guidelines for how to create it and exactly what you want. I agree. I think it's it's <clears throat> kind of social selling 101, right? Uh, putting the power uh, to the people and having them go in and create their own, uh, their own videos and leaning on compliance workflows and things like that to make sure that everything that's going out is, is A-OK. -okay. But I think if we go back to that authenticity as a trend, um, having having your people, your social sellers out there creating their own content and not having it be so burdensome on, on you, 
um, is a great way to do it. And with exactly what Connor said, with those frameworks, you can give them ideas and the tools necessary and the structure of how to do it. Um, but lean on, lean on your people to do it. And that's going to create some of the best content for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's daunting for anyone to shoot a video, especially if you don't have a lot of experience, but I would just say, do it yourself, show them that it can be done. Um, and yeah, like I said, just giving them very specific instructions will take a lot of that pressure off. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I think, I think we've gotten through our questions. Connor, anything else to uh, finalize our, our webinar today? Yeah, just again, like if you have extra questions about anything, please feel free to email myself or Megan and we'll be sending up um, those follow-up emails with a bunch of resources for you later today. So keep an eye on those and feel free to share them with your social sellers. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.